The M1 Garand by Joe Poyer and Craig Reich, now in its sixth updated edition, provides all the information you need to determine not only the authenticity of an M1 Garand, but that each and every part is correct for its period of manufacture. The M1 Garand is a very collectible World War II and Korean War rifle. A total of 4,040,802 were manufactured between 1936 and 1945 by the Springfield Armory and the Winchester Repeating Firearms Company. These are generally referred to as World War II Garands by collectors, although they were also in use during the Korean War. During and after the Korean War, another 1,427,970 M1 Garands were manufactured by the Springfield Armory, International Harvester, and Harrington and Richardson. Few, if any, of these M1 Garands saw combat during the Korean War and are usually found in fine condition. They are generally referred to as post-war Garands by collectors. The M1 Garand was a standard issue service rifle to all infantry forces. As such, they were hard used and the vast majority underwent repair and rebuilding both during and after the wars. They were reassembled without regard to serial numbers and parts were replaced as needed. M1 Garands can be divided into two basic types based on their operating system, gas trap and gas port. The gas trap system captured part of the gas stream flowing down the barrel behind the bullet and diverted it from near the muzzle to drive the operating rod. The bayonet was attached to the bottom of the gas trap and the stress it caused was found to damage the front of the assembly. Less than 80,000 gas trap M1 Garands were manufactured. Most were later converted to the gas port system. True gas trap rifles that survived are a rarity. Most that the collector will encounter are fakes or reproductions. To fix the problem, a sturdier gas cylinder replaced the gas trap to provide a solid mounting for the bayonet. A small vent was drilled into the bottom of the barrel. The gas stream was diverted through the vent into the gas cylinder to drive the piston-like operating rod. This new system was adopted on October 26, 1939. As noted earlier, Springfield Armory made almost six times as many M1 Garands as Winchester. Because of their rarity and the Old West ancestry, Winchester Garands rate a large premium with collectors, if they are in original or restored condition. Differences between the two manufacturers are small and some are difficult to determine, but all are thoroughly explained in the book, the M1 Garand 1936 to 1957. As you would expect, the counterfeiters are more than ready to rebuild any Winchester M1 Garand with reproduction or incorrect parts and sell them as original. The same holds true for World War II era Springfield Armory M1 Garands. So why pay a premium price for a faked M1? The M1 Garand 1936-1957 shows you how to tell Winchester parts from Springfield parts. Another way counterfeiters try and steal your money is by using re-welded receivers. As early as the 1950s, the U.S. government destroyed thousands of surplus M1 Garands by cutting or torching the receivers into two parts and selling them as scrap metal. The process is called demilling, and it continues to the present. Over the years, a number of small companies purchased these demilled receiver halves and welded them back together without regard to manufacture. It is very possible to have a re-welded receiver with a Springfield rear half and a Winchester front half, as well as various parts from mixed periods of manufacture. Examine receiver rails and the sides of the receiver for irregularities and bubbles in the metal. These will tell you that the receiver has been welded together from demilled parts. Every part of the M1 Garand was manufactured in accordance with a drawing number. The drawing number was taken from a production drawing that controlled that part's specifications. The drawing number was stamped on nearly every part. As parts were changed to improve performance or reduce manufacturing cost and time, 
a suffix was added to the drawing number. For instance, as you can see here, the digit 8 signifies the 8th change to the trigger guard plate. These drawing numbers can establish when a part was manufactured by comparing the drawing number to the receiver serial number. For instance, a Springfield M1 Garand with a serial number of 998356 manufactured in November 1942 would never originally have had a trigger housing with the drawing number D28290WRA. Any Winchester part found on a Springfield M1 Garand is a later replacement part. The correct Springfield trigger housing drawing number for a rifle with this serial number would be D28290-8-SA as shown on the chart on the left. Drawing numbers for all M1 Garand parts and their serial number ranges are listed in the M1 Garand 1936 to 1957, available from North Cape Publications Incorporated. Three types of rear sights were installed on the M1 Garand during World War II and Korea. They are easily identified by the windage knob on the right side. The Type 1 windage knob was in use to circa serial number 195,000 in February 1941 and had checkered edges. The Type 2 windage knob was used to circa serial number 3,800,000 in June 1945. The windage knob had knurled edges and a locking bar to hold it in place. The Type 3 windage knob lacked the locking bar and was used on all post-World War II M1 Garands. It retained the knurled edges. The rear sight consists of five main parts, all of which underwent several changes during production which can be used to date your rifle more closely. To understand the importance of part changes and codes in establishing the authenticity of your M1 Garand, there were a total of 298 parts changes between 1936 and the end of production in 1957. As a result, 218 parts codes were also changed. If you do not know how to read and interpret these changes, you will not be able to establish the authenticity of your M1 Garand. If you do, you will be able to establish the date the last changes were made to your rifle within a month or so. The fewer the changes, the better in historical and monetary value. These are just a few of the important points to use in identifying and authenticating an original World War II Korean War M1 Garand through examination of the receiver, gas system, and rear sights. Subsequent videos will cover the stock, barrel, and bolt and identifying features of post-war M1 Garands. For additional and detailed information to identify original and correct World War II M1 Garands, obtain a copy of the M1 Garand 1936 to 1957 by Joe Poyer and Craig Reich, now in its sixth edition from North Cape Publications or Amazon.com. Receive a 15% discount when ordering this book or any other from North Cape Publications. Just add the code M1GA to the bottom of the website order form or mention it when phoning or emailing your order.